Elsie de Wolf, December 20, circa 1859, July 12, 1950 was an American actress who became a very prominent interior designer and author. Born in New York City, de Wolf was acutely sensitive to her surroundings from her earliest years and became one of the first female interior decorators, replacing dark and ornate Victorian decor with lighter, simpler styles and uncluttered room layouts. According to The New Yorker, interior design as a profession was invented by Elsie de Wolf. She was certainly the most famous name in the field until the 1930s, but the profession of interior decorator slash designer was recognized as a promising one as early as 1900. She transformed the interiors of wealthy clients' homes from dark wood, heavily curtained palaces into light, intimate spaces featuring fresh colors and a reliance on 18th-century French furniture and accessories. She had, William, Morris design her home, he put gray palm leaves and splotches of bright red and green on a background of dull tan. Something terrible that cut like a knife came up inside her. She threw herself on the floor, kicking with stiffened legs, as she beat her hands on the carpet. She cried out, over and over, it's so ugly. It's so ugly. Hutton Wilkinson, president of the Elsie de Wolf Foundation, clarified that many things de Wolf hated, such as pickle and plum Morris furniture, are prized today by museums and designers. De Wolf simply didn't like Victorian, the high style of her sad childhood, Wilkinson wrote, and chose to banish it from her design vocabulary. Many elements aided her in becoming such an influential figure in the emerging field, her social connections, her reputation as an actress and her success in decorating the interior of the Irving House, the residence she shared with her close friend, Elizabeth Bessie Marbury. Preferring a brighter scheme of decorating than was fashionable in Victorian times, she helped convert interiors featuring dark, heavy draperies and overly ornate furnishings into light, soft, more feminine rooms. She made a feature of mirrors, which both illuminated and expanded living spaces, brought back into fashion furniture painted in white or pale colors, and indulged her taste for chinoiserie, chintz, green and white stripes, wicker, trompe-l'oeil effects in wallpaper, and trellis work motifs, suggesting the allure of the garden. As de Wolf claimed, I opened the doors and windows of America, and let the air and sunshine in. Her inspiration came from 18th century French and English art, literature, theater, and fashion. In 1905, Stanford White, the architect for the Colony Club and a longtime friend, helped de Wolf secure the commission for its interior design. The building, located at 120 Madison Avenue, near 30th Street, would become the premier women's social club on its opening two years later, much of its appeal owing to the interiors de Wolf arranged. Instead of the heavy, masculine overtones then pervasive in fashionable interiors, de Wolf used light fabric for window coverings, painted walls pale colors, tiled the floors, and added wicker chairs and settees. The effect centered on the illusion of an outdoor garden pavilion. The building is now occupied by the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. The success of the Colony Club proved a turning point in her own life and career, launching her fame as the most sought-after interior decorator of the day. Over the course of the next six years, de Wolf designed interiors for many prestigious private homes, clubs, and businesses on both the East and West Coasts. By 1913, her reputation had grown so that her studio took up an entire floor of offices on Fifth Avenue. That year she received her greatest commission, from coal magnate Henry Clay Frick, one of the richest men in America at the time. Here are some of Elsa de Wolfer interior design. 